For over 27 years, a group of intrepid paddlers explored the Delaware River and its tributaries during the third week of June. These river nomads, referred to as sojourners, paddle different sections of the Delaware River every year. The term sojourn means to stay for a temporary period of time in a place. For seven or sometimes eight days per year, paddlers of every age, race, and orientation come together to experience paddling on the last undammed river in the eastern United States. The Delaware River is divided into four sections, the upper, middle, lower, and tidal Delaware River. The upper Delaware flows from the headwaters in upstate New York to Port Jervis, New York. Below Port Jervis, down to the Delaware Water Gap, is the Middle Delaware. And the Lower Delaware is the longest and most populated section of the river, stretching from the Delaware Water Gap down to Trenton, New Jersey. Everything below Trenton is the tidal section of the river. Every year, the Delaware River Sojourn spends a couple of days in each section of the river. I like it because you see so many different parts of the river, from the very scenic wilderness on the north to down in the, to the tidal regions. It's just a variety, and with all the support, it's always safe, it's always fun. We get too much to eat sometimes, but outside of that, it's all good. Known for its excellent water quality and diverse populations of wildlife, unique natural areas and scenic vistas, and historic towns along its shores, the Delaware River is truly one of our greatest national treasures. Following this water trail provides opportunities to see eagles, hawks, heron, beavers, otters, black bear, red fox, deer, and many other animals in their natural habitats. While anyone can paddle the river on their own, the Delaware River Sojourn offers many advantages that help take the guesswork out of the trip. Kayak, food, safety team, shuttles, and camping locations are provided. All you need to do is bring your tent, trailer, or RV to sleep in, along with any other personal essentials or items to make the experience more enjoyable. The Sojourn offers catered meals, including vegetarian and gluten-free options. If you would like to bring your own boat to paddle, transportation is provided. Each section of the river has its own group of day planners who know their sections of the river extremely well. The days are planned to minimize travel, create a unique on-water experience, eat locally prepared meals, educate paddlers on each section of the river, and provide entertaining or educational evening programs. And after all the jacks are in the boxes. Camping locations often include historic sites, state and national parks, private campgrounds, nature centers, and even museums on occasion. Local festivals and attractions are often incorporated into each day's plans. So, what is a typical day on the Delaware River Sojourn like? There's a comfortable flow to the day, referred to as Sojourn Time. Sojourn time is the pace that one encounters when the schedules ebb and flow due to nature, weather, or river conditions. As soon as the sun rises in the morning, the camp begins to stir. People check in with sojourn registration. After check-in, breakfast is served, and gear is prepared for the day's paddle. Paddlers are either bust or make their way to the put-in location where their boats are ready and waiting on the shores of the Delaware River. After the morning announcements and the mandatory safety talk and tips for new paddlers, boats are prepared for launch. Participants gather on water around the put-in until all the boats are off the shore. And the lead boat's whistle signals the start of the day's trip. After a few hours of paddling, enjoying the scenic vistas of the river, the group stops at a predetermined lunch spot. If the location is accessible, hot food is brought in by local caterers, or if the spot is extremely remote, 
a boxed lunch is provided to each sojourner. During lunch, there's usually an educational or informational program highlighting the section of the river that is being paddled. Following lunch, boats are launched and the afternoon paddle begins. Each paddling day can range from 6 to 15 miles. As the boats reach the takeout location, gear is gathered, boats are readied for the next day, and sojourners make their way back to camp. And people relax or take a short hike until dinner is served. Dinner is followed by an evening program. Or just sitting around a campfire enjoying the camaraderie of people brought together by the common goal of enjoying, protecting, and conserving the Delaware River for future generations. At some point throughout the day, a River High Admiral Award may be presented to an individual or group in that section of the river who has provided exceptional service to improve quality, protect water or cultural resources, or educate the public on the importance of the Delaware River watershed. After all, the Delaware River provides drinking water to over 15 million people in New York City, Trenton, Philadelphia, and Wilmington. As the day winds down and quiet time in camp starts, sojourners get some much needed rest. One feature that sets the Delaware River sojourn apart is the National Canoe Safety Patrol, or the NCSP. The Safety Patrol helps new paddlers learn the skills necessary to stay safe on the water and make sure that all boaters wear properly fitting life vests. This makes the sojourn a great trip for inexperienced paddlers who want to improve their skills. When you paddle on the Delaware River sojourn and let your imagination wander the historic shores, you find yourself paddling alongside Lenape warriors traveling between villages, past log rafts headed to Philadelphia to become mast for tall ships, witness revolutionary and civil war battles taking place on the banks of the river, and see George Washington crossing the Delaware as the flowing waters carry you through time. The advantage of a sojourn trip like this is that you can paddle for just one or two days or the entire trip. If you need to take a break from paddling for the day, there's always nearby trails to hike, attractions to visit, or you can simply enjoy a quiet day in camp. Each person's connection to the river is different, but the connection to the river is what each sojourner has in common. Being on the Delaware sojourn is the same as being alive on this earth. We are only in a place for a limited amount of time, and we need to make the best of it. Always love, respect, and care for each other as much as possible. And at the end of the day, all you have is your boat, the river, and the people sharing your journey. For more information about the Delaware River Sojourn, visit DelawareRiverSojourn.com. The Sullivan Catskill Summer, so unexpected. Zip through trees. Later, try your luck at the tables. Splash around, towel off. Then dive into our nightlife. Check into a hot hotel. Cool off with our spirits, wine, cider, and beer. Shop in a quaint village and indulge in inventive farm-to-table fare. The Sullivan Catskill Summer, so unexpected. SullivanCatskills.com For the largest selection of first quality remnant carpeting for every room in your home, choose Mike's Walk-In Carpet, the only remnant stocking dealer in Wayne County with high quality carpet purchased directly from the manufacturer. With over 40 years experience, you'll get professional service every time. Don't settle for lesser quality carpeting from the big box stores. Choose the best, remnants or special order from Mike's Walk-In Carpet on Route 590, Hawley.
Thomas Pitney built the Milford Theater in June of 1911. On the corner of Catherine and Fourth Streets, he saw a business opportunity that was fueled by his passion for film. In 1912, he built an addition to the theater, added a steam heating plant, and strung lights from the Hotel Faucher to the Milford Theater for the moviegoers at his own expense. The theater held matinees and evening movies on a regular schedule, and you could always find Pitney in his reserved seat no matter how many times he'd seen the film. Mr. Pitney was quite an entrepreneur, and in the 1920s, started a taxi and bus service and opened one of the first bowling alleys in Milford featuring two lanes. Business up until the late 1920s was good, but by 1929, the country entered the Great Depression and Pitney leased the theater and began selling his taxis to raise cash. By 1932, the Milford Theater was closed, which broke his heart. Within a couple of years after closing the theater, Pitney was taken to the state hospital in Scranton for treatment of stomach trouble, and Pitney's home and theater were seized for non-payment of property taxes and were to be sold at a sheriff's sale. Despondent because his health was failing and plagued by financial problems due to the economy, Thomas Pitney committed suicide on the stage of the Milford Theater on March 14, 1935. So legend has it in every theater that every theater has a ghost or every theater is haunted. Um, and I can say from personal interactions that this one definitely is. Um, our ghost's name is Mr. Pitney here. Um, he was one of the original owners of the theater way back when. After Pitney's death, a psychic was asked if there should be a mass for his soul. She said no. His home was the Milford Theater and he is still in contact. Further, she said if they needed anything at the theater, they should just ask him. I personally have never seen him, but I have felt his presence, um, and he did, did visit me on my first day working here ever. I was up in the booth showing a movie, and I heard one of the doors close, and I looked over, um, and there was absolutely no one to be found. And after that, I had a conversation with him. And I said, I'm gonna take care of your house and I'll keep everything safe and you keep me safe. And we've been friends ever since. <laughs> From 1941 until 2008, the Milford Theater went through a series of owners and the theater continued to show movies, host live shows and support the community. They also offered live stage performances by summer stock groups such as Sunflower Hill Productions, who always kept a seat open for Mr. Pitney's ghost. Legend has it that there was always a seat that was reserved for him in the house. Um, so we at the theater tried to keep that seat reserved for him, a sort of a respect. And as well as that, we also have our ghost light, which is not only a safety feature in a lot of theaters, but also for the ghost itself. When you turn on the ghost light at the end of the night, at the end of a performance or a rehearsal or anything, you are letting the ghost know that you are done on stage. Mr. Pitney's ghost was sighted many times in a the theater since his death in 1935. There were reports of sounds of a person walking up the steps on the right aisle, lights turning on and off by themselves, or doors being closed or opened as Mr. Pitney passed through the projection room. He seems to he seems to play around a little bit, you know, we'll leave at the end of the night and lock everything up and turn all the lights off and we'll come back in the next day and a certain light will be left on or maybe a door will be open or something like that and we know that he's definitely been a little mischievous the night before. Some of the movies shown at the theater over the years included silent movies, newsreels, and cartoons. The theater also held a special presentation of D.W. Griffith's silent films shot in Milford, just a few miles away from the theater. By 2008, the theater was in total disrepair, and the theater was condemned until the owner agreed to make some repairs, but it wasn't enough to save the theater. Since that time, other owners have tried to renovate and restore the theater, but the theater was never restored to its former glory. In the fall of 2020, the Milford Theater was sold to the Milford Hospitality Group. The theater was in bad shape, candidly. The, the seats were just beyond 
old and, and not even, you couldn't sit in them for more than two minutes without wanting to, to get up. We had antiquated equipment that barely worked. We didn't have a, a light grid. We didn't have a new a soundboard. We didn't have a projector. We had a screen that was not, not really functional at all. And um, we had a basement filled with water. And so, and no heating, uh, no cooling system. So it was pretty much everything you can think of that we didn't have. <laughs> so the renovation really was from the ground up. The first undertaking really was the seats. It's the thing that people complained about. So I hired a seat designer from New York City called Chris Buckley, and he came in and actually designed the layout you see behind me. We went from kind of a mishmash of seating to a straight continental seating with a very nice slight curve. There isn't a bad seat in the house, and that's all due to Chris's design. One of the things that was really dreamy and was fun because my, my friend, Vanessa Carlton, at the time, she was also home for the pandemic. I asked her to come and give me some thoughts on how to design a dressing room, what, it, what are the things you look for when you're on the road, and it was really about comfort. We designed it. Every performer who's come through here has just said that they would actually live there and rent it. So it's one of the things we're most proud of. We hired Ron Fogel and Associates. He came in and redesigned all of the lights in the entire theater and put in a light board. So now we can actually do our own lighting. He also hired somebody to come in and we did all new audio equipment. We bought a brand new digital projector, brand new screen that, that flies up into the ceiling so that we can do a movie and then it goes away and then we can do a play. So everything that we did in terms of the equipment has made the theater really us be able to have the theater wear many different hats. One of the other things about the theater uh, is that it had really old fabric on the walls that um, was literally falling off the walls when we when we when Bill purchased it. So we hired a, another company from New York City called Drape Kings who came in and did the entire design of all the drapes that you see, curtains and the new fabric uh, on the theater walls. We built a, a beautiful lobby bar. People can actually watch the show from the bar, which is which is really, really fun. You know, people love to show up an hour early and have a cocktail and meet their friends and then take their seats. The booth also has a luxury VIP booth and it's one of the best places in the house to watch a show. We put brand new cocktail seating in the, in the rear of the theater here, which is right near the bar. And when you book one of those tables, you get cocktail service and it's exclusive VIP feeling and also one of the funnest places to watch one of our live shows. The biggest job that I have as the artistic director is to make sure that we are doing programming for everyone. We show films, we do live stage plays, music concerts, community events. We're housing all the festivals coming up this year. The Readers and Writers Festival will be here at the Milford Theater. They're so happy to be back. And in October, we have the Black Bear Film Festival, which also, if you know anything about Milford, is one of the biggest weekends here. And the theater is also for rent. So if a company wants to come and do their corporate presentation, TED Talk style here, we absolutely do that as well. If you can think of it, we do it. The theater really is the heartbeat and the hub of our entire community here. It's fun to go grab dinner after a show or drinks before a show. So it's, it's lovely that people can park their car and go to the theater and then go walk to a, one of our restaurants. So it's, it's, it has really, I think, changed the way that people go out in Milford because there was never really this option before. And now we're, we're open every weekend. To find out more about what we're doing and all of our upcoming events, you can go to themilfordtheater.com and click on upcoming events, which will take you to our ticket site. And it's super easy. You can reserve your seat, find a show that suits you, your family, your kids. The easiest thing, just milfordtheater.com. Hi, I'm Lorraine Collins, president of Davis R. Chant Realtors. And I'm Abby pittendra Claus, Vice President of Davis R. Chant Realtors. Chan has been serving the Lake Wallenpawpak region for over 58 years, and we are proud to say we sell more homes by volume than any other real estate company in Northeast Pennsylvania. 
We are coming off our strongest year in the Lake Region real estate market, selling over $430 million in sales volume. We work with sellers to put together a thoughtful but aggressive marketing plan tailored to each home individually. Each of our property listings gets a virtual tour and is professionally photographed, giving the prospective buyer the best first impression. The Lake Wall Popback area is an attractive place to live because of its low taxes, great school districts, and beautiful scenery. Our team of agents here at Davis Archant Realtors has extensive knowledge in the local real estate market. We have experience with everyone from first time home buyers to experienced investors. Chant uses a variety of print media, billboards, open houses, and national real estate websites to promote properties and reach potential buyers. Here at Chant, we know that working together and providing channels of communication and feedback is important for the best outcome when selling your home. If you are ready to relocate, upgrade, downsize, or know anyone who's considering the Lake Region area, please stop by one of our CHAN offices or call us at 570-226-4518 or visit us online at chantre.com. The Sterling Business and Technology Park is currently divided into 23 lots ranging in size from 3 to 30 acres. Each lot in the park is KOZ certified for companies that qualify. The Sterling Business and Technology Park is perfectly located just off exit 17 on Interstate 84 in northeastern Pennsylvania, just under two hours from New York City. If you would like to explore locating your business at Sterling Business and Technology Park, visit sterlingbusinesspark.com. Looking for a memorable day out on beautiful Lake Wall and Paw Pack? Wall and Paw Pack Boat Tours and Rentals offers guests four fabulous ways to enjoy the lake. One, take a breathtaking hour-long cruise with a tour guide detailing the area and history of the region. Two, you be captain for the day by renting a pontoon boat for a few hours, a half day, or a full day. Three, rent one or more of their kayaks for a relaxing afternoon on the lake. Or four, have a blast on one of their stand-up paddle boards. Lake Wall and Paw Pack Boat Tours and Rentals has everything you need for a great day on the water. Reserve your tickets online at wallandpawpackboattour.com or in person at the expanded East Shore Gift Shop where you can purchase your favorite lake souvenirs. Wall and Paw Pack Boat Tours and Rentals at 2487 Route 6 in Holly, across from the lake. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and many other social media platforms. We are always looking for new and unusual story ideas, interesting people, and unique events. Send your ideas for the show to Troy at WallyLife.com. If you're a business looking to reach the Northeastern Pennsylvania market using the most powerful media platform available, contact Emily Grillo at Bold Gold Media, eGorillo at BoldGoldMedia.com. Or call 570-253-1616. Try to have a monster truck. We try to have tractor pull night. We try to have thrill show night and then the other three nights we try to have some type of music in the grandstand so that we do a nice variety of uh, you know events for the year. Here's uh, first place. Gonna go to Patrick McMullen at 281.
is always the same, but it always brings the same family values with it as well. And especially with looking at this year with COVID, you know, we're finally getting back to our old normal. So more than ever, everybody wants to come back and just have the same memories that they've always had. For the older crowd, it's the food. We actually have people come up to us telling they came here just for either our sausage and peppers or our pulled pork. Uh, the younger crowd, I think, is obviously the rides, but also the grandstand uh, attractions. They seem to be pretty up to date with them. Well, this is a family business. Uh, what we sell here at the fair is something special to us because this is family recipes that were handed down through a couple of generations in my family. These are not typical dishes that you see in Mexico. This is something that was, uh, that was created in my family. So it makes it special because now my family is part of the tradition and my kids hopefully will carry on that tradition for the years to come. I think this is an excellent place for people to get out, exercise, let them be themselves. I think because people do love to get out in the outdoors, and this is an outdoors as it gets. We love the Ferris wheel. You see over the whole county and the green trees and everything. Six days a little slow, but that don't mean she's old. Well, there's a flame from my stack is blue, and then your black is cold. Well, my hometown's coming inside, but every day I'm happy you're right. Six days on the road, or I'm gonna make it home tonight. Yeah, six days on the road, or I'm gonna make it home tonight. Tune in to Wally Life every Monday at 9 p.m. on Blue Ridge Communications Channel 13 for the latest in life around Lake Wall and Pawpack.